So there is a bit of a contradiction here in terms of what screenplay was trying to represent within Australian culture and uh, uh, what Good Game Pocket also became part of and what Good Game more broadly had become part of which is the way that Australians talk about, understand and play video games and it continues to be the case that there is a huge conflict uh, between the orientations, temperaments, ideological mindsets of the different institutions in our society. The fact of the matter is that there is a significant but small demographic in this country that is very interested in video games, that plays it, uh, that's interested in it, that wants to uh, discuss it and wants to explore it. And they have at least some disposable income. They can be advertised to, but they are very intelligent. They're very critically minded, but they're also very fun and entertaining people. And uh, they have a lot of things to say. They have uh, their own opinions. They're independent people. And they're not just going to be lectured to. They don't want to be bullied. And they are interested in honesty. They are attracted to genuineness and they are opposed to uh, the lies and uh, snake oil salesmen that uh, might try to uh, lead them down a horrible road. And then you have, on the other side, the television executives who are very old and who are stuck in their mindset of how old-fashioned television is meant to be made. Uh, they have a very structured, bureaucratic, corporate mindset. It's all about production schedules, it's about performance indexes, it's about bringing in revenues, it's about managing and regulating work structures, and it's all about bringing in advertisement dollars. And they have a particular understanding of what television is meant to look like, what attitudes people are meant to have towards television, and what the results of television are meant to be. And so, whenever this doesn't come about, they tend to use their old techniques of shoving something into uh, the graveyard time slots, or defunding it, or just cancelling it. And it tends to be that any TV show that does not fit the traditionalist, conservative understanding of what television is meant to be, will get this sort of treatment. And it continues to this day that any TV show that does not fit the model, even if it's very popular, even if it has a good following, if it does not follow this model, then it will be cancelled. And television networks, uh, the free, major, mainstream, private television networks continue to cancel shows all the time once they believe that they, these shows will not fit the corporate television orientation that they have. And this will just continue to isolate these two groups because if television networks keep cutting down the shows that have small but passionate followings, then those people will just stop being interested in these networks and then they will evolve, go on to the online sections. Uh, you'll have more YouTubers, more Netflix, and they'll just lose interest in corporate TV, corporate free-to-air TV altogether. And so an entire generation of consumers who could be advertised to are just going to disappear. And the, te the private television networks are going to disappear once the generation shift happens, once the older people start to uh, die or they lose their disposable income, and once the current generation that's in control moves into retirement over the course of the next 10 to 15 years, it will eventually be the case especially when millennials uh, are able to have more disposable income if they uh, form up more, get more married, have, get promotions and have larger paychecks and then the television executives will actually want to advertise to these people because they'll become a key demographic, a key cashed up group and yet they will have no products that will interest millennials, especially video game minded or 
millennials who are interested in new technologies, who are interested in not being uh, lectured to, they're not interested in monological uh, forms of entertainment, they're not interested in just listening and watching, they're actually wanting to engage and become active, and there's nothing that on offer in the television networks that will interest them. Because as long as television still thinks in the old ways of you create content, you put it on screen, and everyone shuts up, sits on the couch, and watches it, as long as they still think in that way, as long as they think that there is a one-way street relationship between content creation and viewing, then that will not interest this younger generation who are much more interested in dialogue, in engagement, in democracy, in discussion, in active participation. And so television will just disappear if it is unable to adapt to the new environment that this new technology-rich age is bringing us, then, te then television deserves to disappear. Because if you can't adapt, then you don't belong to be... you don't deserve to be a popular mainstream institution in our society.